What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some frame generation and FSR 3.1 on the Steam Deck. Now I've got the Steam Deck OLED here, but we should see very similar performance out of the Steam Deck LCD. Might be getting a bit more here because we do have faster RAM. But either way, this is pretty awesome in my opinion. And I do want to mention that this is not system-wide on the Steam Deck. Hopefully, uh, you know, we do get fluid motion frames across the board on this unit soon. But Nixus has updated five of their games. So we've got a lot to work with here. And I wanted to test out at least four of them because two of them are basically the same game with different characters. Anyway, I still wanted to show this off because I thought it was really awesome. And again, you know, if we could get this system wide, it would work with all games. But unfortunately, right now, we've got a few that we can pick and choose. And in all actuality, these are games that I personally like to play on a regular basis. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first one we have here is Spider-Man Remastered, and I will admit that this game has been running really well on the Steam Deck OLED. Uh, even the original Steam Deck LCD updates to Steam OS and updates to the game have really given us some decent performance. We're at 720p, no scaling, so I'm not using FSR, and we're at medium settings right now. I'm at 720p due to my game capture. Uh, sometimes it will capture that 1280 by 800, but unfortunately most of the time I just have to take it to 720 to get everything right. And this really isn't that bad. I mean, I don't mind playing it like this. I would actually just kind of lock it down at 40, 45 FPS, but we can get a lot more out of it, especially with FSR 3.1. So we're going to head back into the settings, and we're going to keep everything the same. So we're at 720p, medium settings, uh, no custom settings here. And we're just going to enable FSR 3.1 and keep it right there at balanced. So it would be nice if, you know, with these settings here, we could just kind of lock this right there at 60 FPS on the Steam Deck. But taking a look at that FPS, you can see it's a bit all over the place. It's much better than it was without any kind of scaling, but we're still under that threshold there. And I say threshold because I really do like playing these games at a smooth 60 or even over. Since we've got that 90 hertz display on the OLED, you know, with all of the games that I can run at 90 hertz, I've been trying to take it up there. Now, we've got one more thing we can do here. With recent updates, we've got frame generation built into the settings for this game. Back here, at the very top, frame generation. And obviously, we're going to be using AMD's frame generation. We're going to be sticking with FSR 3.1 at balance. And yeah, I mean, this is really great, especially for this game and uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. If you take a look at that FPS now, you can see it's jumped up tremendously. So instead of going under 60, with uh, FSR 3.1 at balance, we had an average of around 57 FPS with this game. We're now in the mid-70s on average with this. And remember, we're still using that medium preset, so there's a chance, I mean, we could lock this down at 90 hertz on the Steam Deck OLED low settings with uh, FSR set to performance, frame gen on, and run this at 90. But with the way we've got it set up right now, I think it's a good mix of a great FPS and really good fidelity given that we're at 720p or 800p on the Steam Deck's built-in screen. So yeah, for Spider-Man Remastered and Spider-Man Miles Morales, this new built-in frame gen on the Steam Deck does work wonders. So let's go ahead and test out another recently updated game. We've got Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and this is one that's given me a lot of issues on the Steam Deck. Uh, even with the IGTI built-in scaler, that's usually what I've got running here. But right now, we're at medium settings, 720p, FSR 3.1 is at balance. And this one's definitely all over the place also. But, you know, if you don't mind playing at 30 FPS on the built-in screen, you could get better fidelity out of this game, taking those settings up a little bit, maybe not as much FSR. But just like Spider-Man Remastered, we've got access to frame generation. So from the settings, still at medium, 720p. We're going to enable frame generation directly from the settings, keeping FSR 3.1 at balanced. And before, with frame generation off, just using FSR 3.1 at balance, we were seeing an average of around 37 FPS. Same exact location here. We're now seeing averages around 62 FPS, which has almost doubled that frame rate. And this is something I've seen with other systems using AMD's frame generation or fluid motion frames. This is awesome to see on the Steam Deck, but you know, it's kind of limited right now to these games. Hopefully we do get access to this across the board with a ton of games because it can really help out with that frame rate.
This is one that I've been playing quite a bit on the Steam Deck OLED, and this one kind of hit the market with Frame Gen and FSR 3.1, at least, you know, when I got it a couple days after it launched. I've been using FSR 3.1 at balance, kind of locking this down right at around 30 FPS, medium settings, and I've been having a really good time with it. I don't mind playing this game at 800p, medium, 30 FPS on this screen. I think it looks absolutely amazing with HDR enabled. But there's a way to really up that frame rate here using frame generation. We're going to keep the settings the same. FSR, balanced, 800p, medium settings. But uh, the one thing that I actually didn't notice when I first started the game up was the addition of frame gen at the very bottom here. And as soon as I enable this, I'm over 60 FPS. This is some really awesome performance, especially for a game like this on a handheld. We're not pulling that much power from the battery, even with frame gen on. And I will admit that in some cases, when there's a lot of enemies around, I have seen it drop under 60. But for the most part, we're in the high 60s, low 70s with this game. And there's been a lot of talk about the ghosting problem with AMD's frame gen. With a game like this, Ratchet and & Clank and Spider-Man Remastered, it's not something that I really noticed. There is a little bit going on with this one here. Not so much with the uh, Ratchet & Clank game and Spider-Man Remastered that we took a look at. But there is a game that, you know, really does kind of ghost out quite a bit with it enabled. And the Steam Deck already has a really hard time running that game. That's the next one we're going to be taking a look at. But yeah, if you've got a Steam Deck and you've been playing any of these games, at least give Frame Gen a quick try. It's super easy to enable. You can disable it if you don't like it. And there's one more thing that I've actually been experimenting with when it comes to Frame Gen and FSR 3.1, and that's locking the GPU clock. So on the Steam Deck, we can actually lock it at 1600 megahertz. For the most part, yeah, you probably might burn a little more battery that way, but I've noticed we do get a higher frame rate in most cases, and it seems to be a bit more stable across the board. Really easy to enable. We're gonna press the button on the front of the Steam Deck with those three little dots. Manual GPU clock. We're just going to take it all the way up to 1600. And now if you take a look at our performance overlay, you'll see that that clock is at 1600, but it does seem to kind of smooth everything out. It does take a little more from that GPU to use frame gen, but in my opinion, it's well worth it with the kind of performance gain that we're getting out of most of this stuff. The final game I wanted to test out here was Horizon Forbidden West, and this has been one that's just been hard to run on the Steam Deck. Uh, right now, we're actually at low settings. FSR is set to performance. We're using FSR 3.1, 720p, and performance is not great. So especially when we get up on my mount here, you'll see uh, up in the air, actually, I mean, when we're not doing anything crazy, it kind of smooths out. But yeah, I mean, it dips way down in certain cases. This has just been a really hard one to run on iGPUs, be it, you know, handhelds, mini PCs. And even with frame gen enabled on the Steam Deck, it's not a night and day experience like other games we took a look at, but it does help out just a bit. We're going to head into the settings here, 720p. We're at low, not very low. I got a custom preset going here, a couple things turned off. FSR 3.1 is set to performance. Now, one thing you could do is use the dynamic resolution scale. But instead of using that, we're just going to enable frame generation. And you can see our frame rate did jump up quite a bit, but we're kind of in a static position. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. As soon as we start moving around, I mean, it does dip down. So one thing that I've actually been doing with this game is enabling that static GPU clock, just setting it as high as possible. And that does seem to help out just a bit. So, I mean, instead of dipping under to as low as 22 FPS, with frame gen on, we barely go under 35 FPS in some cases. So yeah, when there's a lot to render on screen, you'll see it go down quite a bit, but it's not as bad as it was. And this can really help out with a lot of these games that support it right now. And hopefully down the road, we get system-wide frame gen like we have system-wide FSR. I think it would be really awesome to add fluid motion frames to our performance menu. We can enable it with all games as long as they're full screen and V-Sync off. Really glad to see Nixus had this to their PC game ports. Uh, this is really awesome for the Steam Deck and other handhelds and even lower end systems just using iGPUs from AMD. I've been testing this quite a bit on the Radeon 780M and the ROG Ally X. Personally, love the kind of performance we can get out of that because, you know, we've got a much more powerful GPU and CPU over there, but we are going to be burning a lot more power than we would on the Steam Deck OLED. So I figured I'd show it off here. And, you know, if you've got these games, 
Definitely give it a try. It's not going to hurt anything. You can turn it off if you don't like it. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you do end up giving this a try, let us know in the comments below how it went for you. And like always, thanks for watching.